All right, welcome to the show, everybody. I got a great one for you. So Rabbi Shmuley and Cenk Uger went at it round two. It was absolutely unhinged. And I'm going to show you a bunch of the clips, and it is fun. So buckle up for that. Rabbi Shmuley is probably the most unhinged person online. And that says something because you know how, how much of a, a cesspool online can be. So we'll dive into that in just a second. We also have a potential Trump bankruptcy may be imminent. So he's gone bankrupt. His businesses have at least six or seven times, but personal bankruptcy he's never gone through before. He's now put in a position because of some of these civil cases where he has to put up hundreds of millions of dollars by March 25th, and uh, he apparently can't secure a bond for that. So he may have to liquidate a bunch of his properties. This is a big, big deal. So I'll give you the specifics of that as well. We have... Uh, Trump makes an insane comment about Jewish Democrats. You're not going to want to miss that. The Boeing whistleblower, we have updates. The guy who was basically explaining all of the wrongdoing behind the scenes, and he wound up dead. You'll never guess what's being reported now. This, this is dark, man. Um, then we'll get to the Supreme Court and their new insane immigration ruling. And, and more. So don't go anywhere. We got a lot to get to. Everybody do me a big favor. Please subscribe to the channel. Helps us out massively. Costs you nothing. And a big thank you to everybody who supports this show on Patreon or tips with the thanks button on YouTube. Remember, I've never talked to an advertiser. I'm very proud of that fact. But that means, you know, you guys have to help fund it from the ground up. And many of you do. And I'm deeply, deeply appreciative from the bottom of my heart. So if anybody would like to do a $2 donation a month or $5 donation a month, Patreon link is below. All right, let's go ahead and kick it off here. So Jenk Uger went on Piers Morgan's show. And there's an interesting backstory here because Jenk was told, hey, we're going to have you with some other guests. I actually don't know uh, what guest it was supposed to be, but they pulled out of the show. So who ended up filling in at the last minute? Rabbi Shmuley. Now, the last time Jenk was on Piers Morgan debating Rabbi Shmuley, it was a mess, to say the least. I'm putting that kindly by saying it's a mess. And, you know, I certainly got the sense watching it. Jank is like, never again with this freak. <laughs> Not a chance. But he's a man of his word, said he'd come on. They switched the guests up on him at the last minute. He was like, all right, I guess I'll do it. And then we get just a... I'm, I'm not even going to try to explain it. Let's just play and we'll break it down as we go here. There's a lot of stuff to respond to. By the way, take note, Piers is also totally sick of Rabbi Shmuley shit. The last time Rabbi Shmuley was on, Piers afterward was like, all you do is ad hominem attacks. They didn't do it to you, you did it to them. So like, you know, get your shit together. <laughs> so you can see even Piers is like, God damn it, I hate this guy. All right, let's dive in. Uh, Cenk, let me ask you first of all, a lot of heat coming from America towards Benjamin Netanyahu, with Chuck Schumer basically implying that he should be replaced as leader in a new election as soon as possible. What do you make of that? Yeah, it's unprecedented. I, I think people need to understand what a giant deal this is. Uh, the leadership of uh, either party, Democrats or Republicans, have never, ever broken with Israel. Chuck Schumer is one of the biggest supporters of Israel in the whole country. For him to come out and say, enough is enough, uh, you've got to turn around, you've got to call new elections, and Netanyahu is... Uh, damaging Israel uh, is an enormous moment in American-Israeli relations. And he's not alone. Thomas Friedman, uh, also an enormous Israeli supporter, uh, wrote an ar article in the New York Times saying that Israel is now radioactive. And so these are not enemies of Israel. And the same goes for me. Allies of Israel saying, please, turn around, because this is not good for... Like, look, I care deeply about the Palestinians. I'm not sure the Schumers of the world or the Bidens of the world have ever shown that. But all of us care about Israel as well. And this is catastrophic for Israel's reputation. And you do not want Israel to be alone in the world again. 21,000 women and children have been slaughtered at a minimum. Yeah, the number I see is 40,000, according to Euromed Monitor. 92% are civilians. So he's using a very conservative number there, but the point still stands. 1.1 million Palestinians are starving as we speak now. You must turn around, otherwise this is Horrific, not just for those starving, innocent human beings, but also for Israel itself. Rabbi Shmuley, I mean, you've been obviously extremely passionate in your support of what Israel's been doing in response to that terror attack on October the 7th. But attacking Rafah, which is a refugee camp right now with 1.5 million people, the vast majority of whom are completely innocent people, many, many, many hundreds of thousands of women and children, this is going to be a catastrophe 
if Netanyahu goes ahead with attacking Rafa, isn't it? The catastrophe for the Palestinian people is Hamas, Hamas. They're like the doll with the drawstring. You pull it and they say the same thing over and over and over. I don't know how they haven't evolved yet to this point. You can't just always say the word Hamas and think that's a debate ender. It is not a debate ender. Oh, it's so weak. It's literally the first three seconds of something he said, and I'm already, like, absolutely losing my shit watching this. If Israel does not destroy the last two military battalions who are encamped in Rafah, who, without whom there cannot be more terror attacks, will have peace in the Middle East, it's a catastrophe for the Palestinians, whose food was stolen for 18 years before this war by the leadership, Ismail Aniyah, who's worth $7 billion. Where was the outrage of Cenk Igor back then? How is it that these guys are flying around in private jets while the, the Palestinians were suffering for 18 years with no hope? This is not about caring about the Palestinians. It's about pure anti-Semitism. Let's look at... <laughs> He's got, he's got nothing. Hamas, Hamas, Hamas. You're an anti-Semite. It literally doesn't matter what you, His whole thing was about how I'm not an enemy of Israel. I actually am pro-Israel, which is why I'm saying this is all disastrous because your reputation is destroyed and you're going to be alone in the world with nobody on your side. That's bad for you, Israel. His whole thing was how he's pro-Israel. He's an anti-Semite. And by the way, the idea that Hamas is stealing all of the food. There are 30,000 Hamas members. There's 2.3 million people in Gaza, or at least there were before, you know, over 30,000 of them were murked. So you do the math on that. 30,000 people are taking all the food that would go to 2.3 million people. It, it's such, it's such a shitty argument. It's offensive. March 14th, 2024, a date that will live in infamy in the annals of the United States Senate, where a Senate majority leader called for regime change of the only democracy in the Middle East. By the way, I want to <laughs> congratulate, you know, staring in Lebanon. Vladimir Putin, a real, real nail biter yesterday, where he only won by 90% of the vote. Schumer did not call for regime change in Russia. He didn't call for regime change. Bashar al-Assad, Israel's next door neighbor, who killed 600,000 Arabs. He didn't call for regime change in Turkey. Uh, uh, you know, my friend Cenk was born. By the way, yeah, that's the problem, is the U.S. isn't pro-regime change enough. That's the problem. By the way, the U.S. government did try to topple the Syrian government. But this is his argument. You're calling for Netanyahu to step down in Israel? Why aren't you calling for every government anywhere that's ever done any bad thing to step down? Well, first of all, they do, <laughs> right? But second of all, like, that's the point about how isolated Israel now is on the world stage. And what Shmuley doesn't understand, because he's an idiot, is that this is all kabuki theater. So, ideally, the U.S. government wants Netanyahu to step down, Somebody could take his place, and then they will pretend like, oh, if you reel in the genocide, like 5%, will act like you're moving in the right direction, all the problems are fixed, we'll open up the floodgates again to send even more money, maybe we'll double the money going in, double the weapons, etc. So it's all kabuki theater. Pin it all on Netanyahu, he's the scapegoat, he's the fall guy. Somebody replaces Netanyahu, just like Netanyahu, but the U.S. now can put lipstick on the pig to act like, hey... We got rid of Netanyahu, but he's so stupid, he thinks that Chuck Schumer doing this kabuki theater about Netanyahu stepping down is like Chuck Schumer is now turning to be pro-Hamas and anti-Israel. You are the world's biggest jackass. In Turkey, where, where you have the Turkish tyrant Erdogan who slaughters and imprisons journalists. He didn't call for regime change in So what does that tell you? What does that tell you? Okay, very so, much so, What does that tell you about the strength of feeling in America, amongst senior politicians, about what its great ally Israel is currently doing, Th their initial full-scale support. It, tell, it tells me that president. It, it, you're, you're, it's, it's a fair question, uh, uh, Pearson. By the way, thank you for having me on again. Mm. It tells me that President Biden, who's a good man, but he's 81 years old, has allowed one city in the United States, Dearborn, Michigan. Michigan is the is the critical s swing state, where you have a congresswoman named Rashida Tlaib, who is a dyed-in-the-wool anti-Semite, not anti. <laughs> 
to Israel, a Jew hater. He has allowed one city to dictate the presidential election. This is all about presidential politics. And, uh, and Chuck Schumer allowed himself to be Joe Biden's court Jew. They needed a Jew to get on the Senate floor and say that the people of Israel will no longer be a democracy. You know, to my friend Cenk, the last time we were on, I said to him, you, you know, you, you, you withdrew your presidential campaign. I'm sorry that you were outpolled by even, you know, a SpongeBob square pants, but you went back from your presidential campaign. You, if you want, you could run as the chief information officer for Hamas because you parrot their lies about Israel's being genocidal. But I will tell you one thing. All he has is Hamas, 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 you're an anti-Semite, and ad hominem attacks. And by the way, I've noticed even people who are massively pro-Israel are like, I, I don't want anything to do with this guy. This guy's a fucking idiot. This guy does not represent me. Do not care one bit that the leadership of Hamas have stolen the future of the Palestinian people for 18 years. And only when Hamas well, think, is oh, destroyed on, on. and removed. All right, Rabbi Shirley, I think, look, a lot of people will share your concern about what Hamas has done in those 18 years. They will also think that Netanyahu has basically admitted that he was perfectly happy with Hamas running Gaza because it separated the Palestinians uh, from Hamas and the Palestinian Authority. But you haven't, in all that rant you've just unleashed about this, you haven't actually answered my question. And I will make it, you know, personal to you. You're a rabbi. When you see a refugee camp, that is what it is. Rabbi. When you see a refugee camp with one and a half million people, they've all been sent there and displaced there by Israel, by the bombardment in the north. When you see this and you see Netanyahu saying, we're going to go in for several weeks, surely you don't think this is a good idea for Israel that you're going to see the wholesale slaughter of innocent women and children? You know, uh, it's a fair question. Again, uh, Pierce, let me be clear. War is horrible. War is terrible. Israel has said that they will move those 1.5 million civilians, but war is always terrible. Has Netanyahu made mistakes, especially when he allowed Qatar to continue to give Hamas a billion dollars a year? Yes, he did make those mistakes. I'm personally friendly with Netanyahu. I was critical of that decision at the time. I remain really? so. But let's be clear. Without 700,000 Americans dying in the civil war, which is atrocious, we might have had slavery, God forbid. If we didn't destroy... <laughs> He's comparing the genocide and ethnic cleansing of Palestinians to the U.S. Civil War. Oh, and by the way, notice, oh, war is terrible. War is horrible. This is when he's asked about all these innocent Palestinians who have died and will continue to die. Is that his line over October 7th? Is he like, look, October 7th, I mean, war is nasty. War is gross. War is terrible. But, you know, this is war. Does he say that about October 7th? No, it's terrorism, war crimes, violation of international law, barbarians. But when it's Israel doing the war crimes, violating international law, it's, ah, oh, bro, I mean, we, we're trying, bro. We're trying our best, bro. There was starvation in Berlin. Innocent, beautiful German children. They weren't Nazis. Those who were conscripted into the, into the Hitler Youth. And by the way, Young Turks is essentially the Hitler Youth. I don't know why Cenk uses that name still. He's going back. They were the ones who perpetrated the Armenian Genocide. I, These German children were not... <sighs> It's fucking guy, man. Holy shit. Holy shit. This loser. Sorry, wait, Japanese children were not right. responsible. If Japanese children listen. were not responsible. But without destroying right. Hamas, there will be war for the next okay. hundred years. I, and let me just say that you've gone once again very ad hominem with the other guest when he hadn't on you. I'm not, I'm not, so, okay, I'm not going ad hominem. You cannot are. use a gen... <laughs> he just said he's a Nazi. I'm not, I'm not going ad hominem, bro. I just said that his uh, thing is like the Hitler Youth, bro. I'm just... Bro. Oh. I don't name you. Are. Let me go to Jake. Sorry. Jake, your response. Yeah. Yeah. Look, Piers, I wasn't supposed to come on with this guy. I was supposed to come on with a different guest. I'm never coming on with him again. He, he's all he has is ad hominem. So you ask him about 21 to 25,000. Are you really that afraid slaughtered. of that me? Is, that God, he won't shut the fuck up. Please, please Rabbi debate, Shmuley. You say you're not going to come speak. on. Let him speak, please. Come on, Cenk. Let him speak. Cenk, you ran for president. Let him speak, please, Rabbi people. Shmuley. Come on. You Look, <laughs> when you're, Piers Morgan is the ultimate, like, enlightened centrist, fence-sitter, civility guy, and he's he's had it. He's had enough of Rabbi Shmuley. Jesus. Run. Rabbi, let him speak. Cenk. Okay. Rabbi Shmuley says he wants to murder more women and children and then calls us genocidal because we're trying to protect women and children, both in Israel and in Palestine. You see me sticking up for Israel when Hamas attacks. You see me criticizing Hamas, saying they're terrible, I don't agree with them. You see me uh, trying to protect innocent lives on both sides. Then this guy comes on, he says, kill more Palestinians. We killed, what, 700,000, he said, in another war. So are you going to go to 700,000 in Gaza? The Rabbi civil war, Shmuley. for God's sake. I okay. wish you knew a little okay. bit of American Rabbi Shmuley, who says murder, 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 murder. That's all this rabbi. Hey, this is a hey okay, genocidal I've got to say one more thing. 
murderers, Jews no, are killers. No, no, shut up. Pier, Pier, Pierce, 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 can I, Pierce, can I ask this man one question? The man no, ran for president. No, you can't ask anything. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm going to ask you guys, is Rabbi Shmuley playing like a WWE heel character, or is this who he really is? Because it certainly comes across like he's playing a WWE heel, doesn't it? Whatever, do is lie. Shut up and everything. Listen, stop your ad hominems. I want to ask one question, Pierce. Of, of my ad hominems. If you care about the Palestinians, I, I have one question. I have one question. Why don't you call, Chank, for the unconditional surrender of Hamas today, the release of the hostages, and the war will be over? I am challenging you now to call for the <laughs> unconditional surrender. Why don't you call for the unconditional surrender of Netanyahu and the IDF and all the generals in Israel who are doing a literal genocide and ethnic cleansing right now? Right now. Why don't you call for them to step down? I'll give you the opportunity right now to call for them to step down. Fucking crickets. Right? Please, please spare me with the moral grandstanding. Do you want to have a serious conversation or do you not want to have a serious conversation? This fact of the matter is, this isn't a thing. You're never going to get Hamas all stepped down today and everybody lived happily ever after. You idiots just created five times as many Hamas by creating so many orphan kids and killing mothers and fathers and uncles and aunts and grandmas. The idea that what, you're going to just be done with Palestinian hardliners now when you're creating more of them day after day after? Fuck off. He's so stupid. Oh my God. Challenges. And I'm not going to answer so any of your or not? stupid will questions. Will you do so or not? No, I'm, listen, I'm not entertaining this Pierce, why won't he answer the question? Okay, Pierce, hey, he won't, won't he shut the up. No, there's no talking to this guy. Let me Pierce, check, 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 let me ask Cheng. I want to play you a clip, Cheng, of Netanyahu uh, 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 the weekend. This is what he said. Okay, can I just, before you do, Pierce, yeah. look, I hope that everybody in the audience understands that this guy isn't helping Israel at all. He's putting a very, very ugly face to Israel, and I hope that you don't make the mistake out in the audience of thinking that everyone in well, Israel, I'm gonna come, or I'm God gonna... forbid, hold on, let me yeah. finish, yeah. or that anyone else... That, that is Jewish, thinks anything like your Rabbi Shmuley does. My Jewish friends are horrified, oh, Chank, Chank, horrified Chank, Chank, by the Chank, death toll. Chank, rabbi Chank, doesn't care. The rabbi doesn't care at all. He's the most on, immoral man I have ever met in my life. You right. cannot be... Okay, wait a second, go ahead. Wait a second. Ask no, I asked him a simple, Pierce, I asked a simple question. Let Piers ask the question. I would like to play what Netanyahu said and ask Chank for his reaction. Some people have a knack for opening their mouths and talking at the exact wrong time. Like there's a natural ebb and flow to a conversation or an interview or a debate. And it's like, it's like a dance almost. There's a rhythm to it. It's like, you say something, I say something. You say something a little longer, I say something a little shorter. You say something a little shorter, then I say something longer. There's like a flow to it. This motherfucker is like, flow my ass cheeks. No, I'm just going to jump in at the exact wrong time every time. And by the way, I'm, even if he was saying things that were intelligent, which he's not, which he's not, even then it would come across like he's an idiot and he's losing because he has no understanding of the cadence and the rhythm and the flow to how to have a debate. When people tell us don't go into Rafa, that's like telling the allies, uh, listen, don't go to Berlin, <laughs> leave, leave a quarter of the Nazi oh army intact. God. You know, that's, that's ridiculous. You know, if we leave a quarter of the uh, Hamas uh, uh, fighting uh, uh, terrorist uh, battalions in place, they'll regroup, reconquer Gaza, and uh, in fact, perpetrate once again what they vowed to do, which is to repeat the October 7th massacre over and over and over again. You're not killing Hamas. 92% innocent civilian kill rate. And by the way, don't let them fool you. They're doing it on purpose. They want to do an ethnic cleansing. They want to do a genocide. They are purposefully killing civilians. All this, oh, Hamas, Hamas, we're going to go after Hamas. You can't leave the Nazis. You're not even getting the bad guys. Check your reaction to that. Yeah, so this guy has been justifying uh, the slaughter of Palestinians from day one. You have to understand something. In order for Israel to get peace, which should be the goal of its leaders and its citizens, and, and it is certainly of its citizens, but I don't know, definitely not its leaders at this point in time, you have to get the peace as you did with Egypt. With Egypt, there are no more bombs. You've had peace for over 40 years, and, they, and all of the doubters and all the right-wingers and all the warmongers told you, oh, Egypt will never listen. Egypt will keep trying to kill you. Egypt's going to try to kill all the Jews. But they didn't. The warmongers were lying to you, just like they're lying to you today. And why are they doing that? They're doing it because they want to remain in power. Netanyahu knows the minute that this war, and by the way, it's not just Netanyahu, it's also the leaders of Hamas. They should have taken a truce, a ceasefire earlier. They it, held it up on absurd grounds of not releasing the names of the hostages. Mm, I'm sorry, but in all these negotiations, the sticking point for Hamas is we want a permanent ceasefire. In other words, fully stop the ethnic cleansing and the genocide. But Netanyahu and the Israeli government are insistent on only a six-week ceasefire, which means what? What happens after six weeks? 
Why would you make any deal where you're signing off on the further wholesale destruction of Gaza six weeks from now? So I don't even agree with him there. I think that's a little too harsh. There's on both sides profit from this war, but the citizens of Israel are, are the only people who can change it. The way you get to peace is doing a peace deal. This endless war and the endless occupation is, is going to prevent you from having the safe haven for Jews that you have desired and deserved all of these years. What's funny is that Jenk, Jenk has viewed himself as a, like sort of a pugnacious fire breather type, um, but you put him next to Rabbi Shmuley. And he looks like the most calm, even keeled, <laughs> rational man you've ever seen, ever. So um, let me just show you. I'll show you a couple more real quick. But OK, so they go on to yell at each other. I think they start uh, debating Candace Owens. It's not much of a debate. Uh, Jank admits that some of the stuff Candace Owens said about Rabbi Shmuley was anti-Semitic. But they get into all that stuff at the end of the interview. And I'm going to get to this in a little bit. I have two mini clips for you before we get to this one. But Piers Morgan brings on Rabbi Shmuley's daughter. The reason he brings her on is because Rabbi Shmuley's been under a lot of fire because his daughter has a sex shop and he, like, helps her advertise for her sex shop and has done these, like, social media videos where they, like, are talking about sex toys and shit. And everybody online is like, this is the fucking weirdest thing I've ever seen. That's your daughter, bro. Like, what are you doing? And so he brings her on later on, and oh man, is that gross. But okay, let me show you this part. It speaks for itself, watch this. Even if you think Hamas is in the hospital, which by the way, the IDF has never proven that in any other hospital raid that they have done. They, every one of their pieces of propaganda has turned out to be a lie. It's proven every single Did time. Did you just say hospital even rape? If old Don, Did you just you say rape? Finish? Pierce, I gotta go. Did this you say that Jews rape? <laughs> Jenk says hospital raid, and he goes, did you just say rape? Did you just say Jews rape? Oh, my God. Oh, this guy is a living cartoon. All right, one more. There is no open-air concentration camp. And, and what you just said, that Israel killed 12,000 children and they killed them all, Hamas uses them as human shields. They are their bulletproof vest. Go. This is a blood libel. This is rank anti-Semitism <laughs> that we have suffered for 2,000 years. And Shank, if you're too afraid to debate me, next time say no or at least read a Wikipedia page, for God's sake. It's blood libel, according to Rabbi Shmuley, to point out that the IDF killed, now the actual number is 15,000 children in Gaza. And I think that's a low estimate, even though that's the high one of the official numbers that have come out. We're so far behind with the capacity to keep up with this stuff. But uh, low number, low, low number, 12,000, high of 15,000, probably more than that. It's anti-Semitic and it's blood libel to point that out. All right, so now buckle up. The cringe, the cringe meter is about to absolutely shatter. Piers Morgan asks, what's your best selling like sex toys to Rabbi Shmuley's daughter who runs a sex shop? Yeah, I know. I know, guys. Like, what, what are we doing here? But guess what? My reaction, your reaction, they're going to like try to bring Jenk into this conversation about the fucking sex toys with the father and daughter. And it, it is gloriously awkward. Watch this. Sexual experience to make it more exciting, to make sex more pleasurable, last longer. And she called me, my dad, and these products filth. One word to millions of people, <laughs> filth. So Look, I'm no Candace Owens fan, but <laughs> it doesn't take an anti-Semite to say the father and daughter talking like sex, sex shop shit. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of filthy, isn't it? Well, I forgot the question. What did you ask? Well, no, you answered the question. That's obviously one of your biggest selling lines. Okay. But, but, but Rabbi Shmuley... Just making sure you, I'm asking the question. I don't want to get... Yeah. Rabbi Shmuley, just find me. Do you, do you think there is something unholy about this or is sex the ultimate example of good holiness? I think that sex is the ultimate form of validation because it makes you feel desirable. It makes you feel that even when you don't have the accoutre... Literally the last thing any of us want is this motherfucker to talk about sex of Gucci or fancy clothing that your very body, your essence is desirable. And the greatest, uh, the, the tragedy of marriage is today is the loss of <laughs> Iraq. Keep your eyes on Jenk's face this entire time. <laughs> desire. It's where husbands and wives become best friends and they're no longer lovers. The average American marriage uh, has sex seven minutes a week, <laughs> I kid you not, which includes the time the husband spends begging. Seven minutes of sex is not going to be enough for you to feel that you are more than the mother of children, but you're actually still a woman. But notice that medieval Christianity really thought that sex was only procreative and that sex is only to have babies. And she's always talking about, about that. But anyone who actually wants to feel that sex is uh, fulfilling, that your erotic needs are catered. Imagine talking like this with your daughter right there. 
That's mortifying. Buy your okay. wife, buy your husband. So you don't have to go to the to a to, to Pornhub or anything like that. We are weaning people off of that. And we're saving right, marriages. Final and question way, on I'm this. One final thing to all the cons- all right, I just want to ask you: How yeah. much money do you make from this? Well, you know, we, we not enough. The, the, the kosher sex books. Well, Chana, you, well, you know, years obviously, you write it. But, so, but Chana, how much money do you make? No, no, so listen, this is actually this is my company. Yeah. Yeah. How, how much do we make on kosher sex? I got nine kids, so I got to. Rabbi Shuli, you can you can interrupt Jake and me. You can't interrupt your own daughter. To help people. Okay, I apologize. Chana, how much money do you make? Can I leave? Yeah. You want me to tell you how much money I make? Yes, from the sex stuff. Uh, I mean, I make a living, thank God. Well, millions, or what, what are we talking here? God no, willing, no, no we, we're we, not we, in the millions yet. I'm not in the millions say, yet, God willing. No, no, I could say clearly, I could say clearly, I don't make anything from it, zero, nothing. Okay. And Hannah's let Hannah me go, is let building me go to the check, company. Finally, finally, check. It needs to grow, and this is great exposure, thank okay, you. Okay, Cenk, we, we've talked a lot of uh, controversial stuff and had a vigorous debate, as always, but can we end on a point of agreement here? Do you see anything in the in the kosher sex business that aligns to your world values? I, I couldn't care less. Uh, I, I'm just mainly looking forward to leaving now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I, I don't care about this topic at all. I don't care what he does with his dildos. Uh, what do you, I don't know what you want me to tell you. Dildos? We're, where did, where did dildos sex- come He's so uncomfortable. <laughs> Look, anybody would be in this scenario. Oh, my God. Holy and hot. Where, where did dildos? Did someone, did someone say dildos? I don't know. Dildos? I don't care. Like, you see, this is, I don't know what you do. Well, why did care. you bring it up? Wait, Chank, Chank, I just praise you for being one of those rare people who accuse can, Jews of genocide. Can I please leave? Lawrence I don't know what sex And you bring up Jewish dildos? <laughs> okay, we are going re- to... I don't know what sex toys you sell. Oh we are going to release Chank now. Why are Cenk, you bringing thank up you very sex? much you know, indeed. You know, this is, this is the thing. He just, just asked Cenk, why are you bringing up sex? He's doing everything he can to not talk about it and run away. No, he wants okay, to be... Well, you know, I got to... Uh, we got to leave can it Can I answer my... I'm going to cut it off there. Oh, my God. Poor Cenk, man. Here he thinks he's going to go on Piers Morgan and have a debate with some, you know some other guy who's parroting the Israeli line. It's Rabbi Shmuley. And then by the end of it, you have to sit there with Rabbi Shmuley and his daughter as they ask about sex toys? Bruh. Bruh. So anyway, uh, our hearts all go out to Jank Uger for having to endure that, but thank you for the comedy gold. Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop. And watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.